in Uganda, mm -hmm. Ginger. Ginger. Mm. Yes. How was life growing up? Um, life growing up was good for mm. me up to a certain point when I, I, I started now experiencing spiritual attacks. Mm -hmm. But uh, I grew up in a Christian family. Right. My dad and mom were born again. They were, I, 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 the only thing I remember, uh, most of the things I remember about childhood is my dad loved my mom so much. Mm. So um, they really took good care of us until when we started now visiting our relatives. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's when I started uh, getting a glimpse of the other side of, of life, you mm -hmm. know. That's when I started now realizing that life is spiritual. Right. My grandmother, uh, the mother to my dad, okay. was a high level sorcerer. And that was her way of, of living. She, she thought that that was uh, the family way of surviving because she was making money um, out of it. P she would get people from uh, different circles of life, mm -hmm. uh, uh, pe politicians, m uh, musicians, businessmen, uh, consulting with her and all that would bring money to the family. Mm -hmm. So um, she started now controlling the community because of her powers and influence. And uh, to her, that was life. That was a way of living because she grew up seeing our great grandparents uh, practicing sorcery. Mm -hmm. And she also had to buy some powers and to, to add to what we had in the family. Yeah, yeah so mm -hmm. that was her way of living. When you're saying controlling the, the community, area. yeah, what do you mean? I, I think I don't know how if here in Kenya people have heard of rainmakers, like people who. Um, like when somebody is going to have a concert, there are some people they have to consult so that on that day it doesn't rain. So my grandmother was that kind of person who people would consult because if they were going to stage, let's say, a show in, in our area and she has not been consulted, that day it would rain. Mm. So people used to take sacrifices to her. They used to take money businesses if a person wanted to have influence mm -hmm. in that area they had to be in good terms with her uh -huh. yeah wow. so for her that was the way of living that mm -hmm. she knew and being her only granddaughter she wanted me to inherit after her so my mm -hmm. my dad rebelled against my my grandmother when he was uh, about 18 because he he got saved that time and according to my grandmother mm -hmm. my my dad was like a prodigal son mm -hmm. because he, he rejected the family witchcraft now she knew very well that uh, my father had an idea of what she was involving herself into mm -hmm. and he never wanted me to be part of it so because i had to visit her during holidays she started the process of initiating me from when i was young so I, the, the time I got to know that my grandmother is in initiating me into her witchcraft is when she took me to a graveyard. And on that graveyard, she introduced me to the ancestors, ancestral spirits. Like she started naming the lineage, I'm so-and-so, daughter of so-and-so, mm -hmm. you know. So I brought my granddaughter so that when I die, you work with her just like you've worked with me. How old were you at this time? That time I was eight. Uh -huh. So now that's when it dawned that hey, grandmother is deep because I was hearing voices from the grave. And it, it's a, it, it was at a point where I could not do anything. I was now helpless because she had already been uh, initiating me. So now this opened up my life to astral projection. What does that mean? It, me it means a person getting out of their body mm -hmm. and being sent for missions because we are spirit beings in as much as we are in our bodies. Mm -hmm. So I started now ge getting those out of body experiences, especially at night. And as a, a child, it, it opened my life up to fear. I was always scared of everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, it started now affecting my performance because I used to perform very well in class. 
but now I, I because of that I started falling sick all the time I was very uh, frightened mm -hmm. of everything then my habits also in class changed to a point that even the teachers were scared of uh, disciplining me why mm -hmm. is because if they punished me in case I, I did something wrong I would attack them at night. Oh Lord, would they know it's you? They would see me and they think they are dreaming. Like oh. for example, uh, I hit a teacher at night. She beat me in class. I beat her in her sleep. She woke up, the eye was swollen. And you know, there's mm -hmm. no way you can explain to another teacher that my eye is swollen because of my student. They'll say, you have something against that student. Right. Yeah, so it happened like that. Mm -hmm. um, so now, because now teachers were afraid of disciplining me, uh, I was experiencing uh, different uh, like uh, changes in my body. Um, I was afraid of uh, things. I would just be in a room and start screaming, and my parents come and I'm telling them some things I can I was able to see, and they, they don't understand it because many Christians don't understand that life actually not only Christians but people don't understand that life is spiritual yeah so my mom started counseling me they started uh, they didn't know much of spiritual warfare by then mm -hmm. yeah so uh, until I was 11 I started doing things that are, are beyond my age for example uh, going to schools and asking for like I went to a certain school and I spoke to the headmistress and I requested her to allow me join the school mm -hmm. without my parents. Mm -hmm. And that's the school I had been wanting to go to. At 11? Yes. So when I convinced her, she, she requested me to invite my parents to the school, Victoria Nile uh, Primary School, and then I joined. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but people were wondering the things I was doing. They were not for a, ch a child. It got to a point where I started now uh, becoming a threat to my grandmother because she initiated me, mm -hmm. but I started now becoming stronger than uh -huh. her. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, even her, her mother had initiated her and at some point she became stronger and they ended up having a fight and uh, her mother died in the process. Oh, so you would so say she's the one who killed them? Yes, oh, so she saw me as a threat mm -hmm. now She's the one who initiated me, and now she had turned me into her enemy. So my life became worse because I was sickly. Until when I, uh, that time when I joined that school, I went for holidays at my auntie's place. My dad has a, a sister. Mm -hmm. My auntie is an influential person because she's in the medical sector, mm -hmm. and she's also into sorcery. It's just recently that she's beginning to realize that these things are, they are useless. Mm -hmm. So she's also trying to come out. She's in the process. But um, she, she was working for reproductive health. Yeah, so her, she was working for the enemy, but in the medical uh, sector. Mm -hmm. And uh, they also wanted me to, to work and serve in the kingdom of darkness because that's the way the family was surviving. Um, me, I was supposed to, to, she wanted to connect me with some big organization so that uh, we promote a certain agenda. Uh, I, I, I think maybe because this is a public platform, <laughs> but something to do with uh, homosexuality, mm -hmm. LGBT, because that has been in their plan for a long time. So, um, and my aunt was looking at me she wanted me to study and then she would connect me because she had the, the connections. So now she invited me to spend the first term holidays. I was in my primary seven at her place. Mm -hmm. And when I visited her, she introduced me to a world I had never been in because coming from a Christian family, there are some values that you have at home, yeah. some movies you won't watch, some music you won't listen to, some places you won't go. Yeah, so my aunt now introduced me to partying. Mm -hmm. She introduced me to wines and alcohol because she had everything in her in her house. She introduced me to that life of partying, and to me as a youth, that was 
what I needed, you know, because I had been stressed out through mm -hmm. yeah, my childhood because of witchcraft. So now I'm going to my auntie's place and there is everything that a, a youth feels yeah, like. Yeah, would be excited yes. about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so she would tell me, if you want your parents to allow you come visit me, don't tell them what we do when you come here. And I, I kept it a secret until when my little brother joined us mm -hmm. and he would say, Dad said that music is bad. Dad said uh, drinking alcohol is bad. And I would look at him like a burden, you know, he's coming to tell on me. <laughs> yeah, so my aunt introduced me to that life and that's how she introduced me to the secular artists in our country. Mm -hmm. For me, I thought that was an opportunity because these are people we've been, we would be uh, watching on, on, on TV and then uh, radio, you listen to their music. Yeah, so when my aunt introduced me to that life, mm -hmm. I felt it was, a, it was an opportunity for me to shine because I also loved music. Yeah, but uh, I didn't know mm -hmm. that behind secular music, the enemy is targeting people's souls. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, and I was also by then among the target. Uh -huh. Yeah, so. So when you were introduced to this secular artist, mm. did you meet him or did you? I, I, the first time I met with his brother, and then uh, there are some other friends of theirs. The, but me, because I loved this musician, I loved his music, by then he was trending. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I longed to one day see him until when we w left my auntie's place, we went back home, I learned that he had a concert and the, co the venue was just next to our home. Actually, uh -huh. we, we documented the places, we were showing people the distance. Yeah, so before they would uh, stage any concert, they would move around advertising and that would attract people to run towards their convoy mm -hmm. to the venue. And I was among the people that were attracted to run with my little brother. Mm -hmm. It was against my parents' um, my parents' will because they never they, they would always tell us not to follow strangers. But because people were running after the convoy, we were also tempted too. Mm -hmm. But we got to a place called St. Jude. Um, and at that place, at that particular spot is uh, where I met that musician and, and his brother mm -hmm. with their group. Oh, uh, they had like three vehicles parked and people were fighting to see him because after he sang, he sat in his, in his vehicle and people were just, the crowd was, you know, gathering. Yeah. And uh, I managed to pull through the crowd I wanted to see the musician and go back home because I knew there was no way my parents are going to allow me to go to the concert. Mm -hmm. And uh, what made it easier for me is I knew the brother we had met through my auntie. Mm -hmm. So in the process of excitement, I felt, uh, you know, like I, I used to astral project. I would get out of my body and come back into my body. This time the experience was different. I just felt myself getting out of me, but I, I did not know how to explain because I was feeling like now I'm getting into a trap. Oh. Yes, mm. and I was holding my brother's uh, hand like so, you know, like when you're scared. Yeah. yeah. And then to make matters worse, we were pushed, you know, as the crowd is uh, struggling. Yeah. And I go to the car, getting to the car, instead of seeing this musician that I had gone to see, I was seeing myself inside the car with the musician. And then I'm standing out here, I'm looking at myself and my brother, and I'm wondering what's, what's happening, happening to me. Yeah, yeah so as, I'm still, as, as I was still in that uh, situation of wondering, this musician uh, gets out through the open roof and he tells me to enter the car with my brother. And my brother is holding my hand. He's like, no, no don't, don't, don't. you don't have to enter this man's car. We don't know him. Daddy said, don't enter a stranger's car. Mm -hmm. But because now my life is in bondage, everything they tell me to do, I yeah, do. do yeah. So from there, we were struggling. Uh, we had a caretaker, someone who was taking care of us. She came, but if, even if she came for my body, my soul had already been caged. Um, 
to a point that when we went home physically I fainted mm. but my soul was understanding everything because we even passed by home we went to Lake Victoria with this musician now him physically the first initiation was with my soul mm -hmm. then later I started now working with them knowing what we were doing because what the enemy targets in a person is, mm -hmm. is the soul because the soul it has the mind, the, Im the emotions, yeah. the will, yeah, the intellect is in this. Everything we do comes from within us. Yes. Yeah, so now that's how we went to Lake Victoria. We went through golf, uh, the golf course. I've tried to document some of these things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we went through the golf course and uh, we went to a certain island on that uh, river Nile. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And around that uh, place, uh, is w they, they show where John Speak uh, stood and discovered, uh, is, it, uh, is it River Nile or Lake Victoria, mm -hmm. something like, yeah. Yeah, so that is the place where we went. So and what happened when you got there? When we got there, to my surprise, I thought maybe what I had seen was enough, but I didn't know that I was now going deeper. You know, when we read the Bible, we read about Saturn, we read about God, people just take things lightly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, w sometimes when you're reading the fall of man, you're, you're, you're reading about a snake talking to a woman and, and things like that. You, you're like, ah, maybe these are just stories. Yeah, they happen. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah, maybe they just want to entertain us. Sometimes, you know, like in Sunday school, those drawings, I never mm. took those things seriously until now when we go to that place yeah. and I, I saw this musician performing rituals on, on that uh, river Nile and then he started enchanting and uh, I saw the, the waters giving way and in the process of the water giving way something came from under the water. Later mm. I realized it was fish. Uh, the size of that fish I could say it swallows like about 15 people. Whoa. That's the size, mm -hmm. yeah. But that water, even when I went to document, I think I'll, 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 I'll show you some, some of the footage. But when I went to, to document, you would see that in that particular place, mm -hmm. the water flows differently. It's like there is a hole right there. It's like there is a door. That no one can explain yes. what happened. Even the tour guides, mm -hmm. when they are explaining, they say, we don't understand what happened here because the, the, the way it flows around this place is different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so now uh, this musician entered with me and I found myself in a, in a, in a, a new world. Like, uh, I found myself in front of Saturn. Whoa. I found now myself mm -hmm. in a in a world it's it's a world a different world altogether but full of uh, like different activities mm -hmm. everyone is busy i was seeing uh, demons now for the first time in real life how would you know these are demons if you mm -hmm. saw them by the way they look because mm -hmm. they were just pale cr uh, pale like uh, i would describe maybe this color mm -hmm. yes and then like uh, they, they are so primitive, you know, I can describe demons mm -hmm. and fallen angels because uh, they are in ranks. Mm -hmm. Now the demons are like the servants, the slaves. Right. Now when they see a human being, it's like they all want to come and touch and see you and me. By then I'm scared, I'm screaming for my life. They are, they are ugly beings. Yeah, and then uh, the, the people there, everyone is minding their business. Mm -hmm. once, you're s once you've been set up, you're on your own. Mm -hmm. So if you rebel, w you just have to do whatever you're instructed to do. Yeah, because first of all, you're scared. Yes. Mm -hmm. if, if you rebel, they can kill you because now they're in control. Because the Bible says that Satan came to steal, kill, and to yeah, destroy. To destroy. Yeah, so now I was encountering things that I didn't have any idea about. And I know many people have no idea that life is spiritual. Mm -hmm. That's now when I was, I was seeing now, um, I did not see everything on that same day, but the, the day I arrived, I saw we were entering like, uh, 
like you know you're entering a compound but there are gates mm -hmm. and these gates are in form of rocks and even when i had go recently when i went to document the guys were telling us that down below there there are rocks mm. so it w it was it connecting sense. to what i i saw mm -hmm. so the seven gates but in form of rocks opening and then now i find myself in a in a a place that is like a hole and in front of me i'm seeing a being that hates any form of human being like just because you are a human being created in god's image yeah. is enough for satan to hate you you How don't have to do know anything this is satan, you just know because life yeah. is spiritual you just know him J just by looking at him mm -hmm. the hatred the amount of hatred in in the eyes the amount of fear that you have at that at that point and then to make matters worse i was seeing him drinking blood and eating human flesh so that's when I knew that you see these fallen angels, God is no longer providing food for them. Mm -hmm. So they are they are farming human beings. That's why you see accidents. There are so much happening and demand for blood in their kingdom. Did Lucifer talk to you that time you went there? The first uh, way of welcoming me was a huge laughter, oh. like someone mocking you, you know? Yes. And uh, there I knew that there was nothing I could do because I was crying, Mommy, mm. Daddy. And uh, he was telling me that not even your government can, can set you free because I control the governments. I control the banks. I control, I control the world. So where are you going to report me? Mm. <laughs> so you think by calling your mother, your mother can come and do anything here? Mm. And... I didn't know that in Zechariah 9:11 God had paved a way for me through the blood of Jesus. I had no idea mm -hmm. that through prayer I could get delivered. It, that's why it's important for parents to teach their children how to pray yes. and how to call upon the name Jesus because if I knew that instead of wasting my time calling them I would have tried to call the name Jesus but I had no idea I was used to calling mommy for everything of course mm -hmm. yeah so now it's from that time that my life changed mm -hmm. I started now uh, serving the devil knowingly because they were controlling my soul and my body at the same time I had no control over my body what people would see was a possessed person then okay. you didn't know that you were possessed at that point? I knew now. I okay. knew that I was possessed. Were you willing to leave this at that point? I, w I would love to. Uh, at that point, I would have loved to, to get out. Mm -hmm. But now, I was no longer in control of myself. Ah. And what people would see is me hanging out with these celebrities. And, mm -hmm. and they would see me, uh, you know, in those concerts. They would see me performing for telecom companies. Uh, they would see me, you know, do things, but they, they wouldn't know that I was being controlled mm -hmm. and I was serving the enemy until when I, I was 18. Yeah, so from 11 to 18. Before you tell us how you got set free, mm. you, you're telling me that you were serving the enemy. Mm. What roles were you given? Now, because in the time they initiated me, I was young. I started by initiating students in schools. Oh. Yeah, then I started now working for uh, some companies on promotions. Mm -hmm. Yes, we would promote products for companies that have signed with the enemy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then, uh, especially me, I wanted to work with telecom companies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now, I uh, started now... Uh, partying with the secular artists, influencing the youth eh? uh, to go to clubs, uh, do all those kinds of things, um, take people's money. Um, like, for example, uh, if, if you went with your friends to club and, and there's this gentleman who's like coming to pose like he has money, us we would make sure he goes back without anything. Oh. Because first of all, I was using witchcraft. So a person maybe uh, got some salary and then he enters club before he realizes he's, he's out of club, he has no shoes, he has nothing. And he doesn't know how it happened because by the time you, you go to work for, for a month mm. and then you earn, 
you're, you're brilliant enough to protect yourself. But all the things that happen, most of them that happen in clubs, people don't know that there are people who are using witchcraft. Wow. Yeah, mm -hmm. so us, the things we were doing were just to destroy people's lives, basically. And then um, initiate other people, especially men. It's very easy to initiate someone who is not in their right mind. How would you do that? Through drinks, mm -hmm. through... Uh, if, if, a, if a man is lasting for you, it is very easy to steal their destiny. Because what the enemy wants is to steal the destinies of people. He, he cannot create a life or a destiny, mm -hmm. but he steals. And then a person works like a slave. You work so hard, and then another person comes at your place of work, that person is promoted. But you, you're working, and it's like nobody realizes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so many things, breaking families, because you would not interact with us and go back home in your right mind. You start now looking at your wife differently. Yeah. And you can't explain why you, you do. You can't explain why. Mm -hmm. You feel like now you want another kind of life. You don't want a settled life. You feel like a uh, settled life is boring. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we, we would do so much, causing accidents. In fact, even um, in the, 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 that documentary, I was showing people places where we would cause accidents. Were you Be part of it? Yeah, because now I, mm. I knew what I was doing fully. So when the, uh, I w my parents would take me to church, and whenever I would go to church and I feel like I have been drained, mm -hmm. I don't have power anymore to serve in the kingdom of darkness, I had to do a sacrifice. And that sacrifice, I would just feel annoyed until when I see blood coming out of somebody. So now I would go and cause accidents. And some of them I would cause when my parents are seeing, but they wouldn't know that I was responsible. They would just say, we survived an accident. Oh, so you would cause an accident in a car? You, you, that Not in a car. Mm -hmm. We would be just walking, and I just stand in a place, mm -hmm. and they are calling me. It's like, I'm not there. Responding. Yeah. Yes, I'm not responding. You know, like you're in a trance. Mm -hmm. And then, before they know, an accident. Okay. Yeah, and then they come and hold me. They think I'm, I'm maybe shocked because of what I have seen. But I, I know very well what I've been doing because whenever I would see the blood coming out of the person, the spirits that were controlling my life would get empowered. Mm -hmm. Then I would be able to do whatever I've been assigned to do. Because now it's like I was working on a remote. Did, so how was your mom relating with you this time when you're actually just doing things in the spiritual realm? From the time I got initiated, my friendship with my mom cut off. Mm -hmm. We just uh, became friends after my deliverance. Okay. Yeah, and it took it took time for the friendship to to be cemented again. So it's safe to say you are a rebellious daughter at that point. Yes, ah. I was prodigal. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. So um, yeah. you're saying when you whenever you would go to church with your parents, you mm. would feel drained. Is there a reason why that would be Prayer. the case? I, I hated ah. places where they were praying. You know places where they were talking about God and condemning the enemy and yeah. So you're saying prayer is important, yes. especially if you have to protect yourself against the dark forces. Yeah, interesting. it's very important. Yeah. One thing that's very interesting about this is because you're revealing secrets mm. of the enemy, which makes us at an advantage because then we would know exactly what, what to, to do. do. With yes. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Well, that wraps up the part one of this story. All right. Yeah. So what was happening when you got to 18 years of age? I was very rebellious. Mm -hmm. I hated myself and I hated my parents because I, 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 I knew very well that they had no idea of what was happening to me. Mm -hmm. And even if they had an idea, Satan had convinced me that there was nothing they would do to mm -hmm. set me free. Mm -hmm. So I was living my own life. Then mm -hmm. I was controlling them at home, but they had no idea. In what ways? I would escape, go to clubs, leave the house open, and then come back again in the morning. Mm -hmm. I would make them to sleep abnormally. Yeah, so when I would go to a, uh, to a club, I would put a spell on them, and then they all sleep. 
So it's like I, I was exposing their lives to danger. Mm -hmm. And I had no idea of what I was doing because I was also being controlled mm -hmm. by the enemy. And then uh, uh, my mom and I, our uh, relationship mm -hmm. was distanced because of uh, she was an intercessor and I was a sorcerer. Mm -hmm. So the two kingdoms cannot, cannot connect. connect. Yeah, she tried so hard to befriend her daughter, just like any parent. And me, I was telling her, you see, we cannot connect because the things you're interested in are not the things I'm interested in. You, you're into prayer, I'm not into prayer. You're older than me, the age difference. Mm. So what conversation do you want us to have? I used to ask her, and as a parent, she would feel hurt. So would break her heart. Yes, mm. and then also um, at school, teachers were complaining. I was always rebellious. I was never at school. I would only go on Fridays. And the time I get out, nobody knows. But I would enter school at will and get out at will because I, I was using my evil powers. Then uh, I was also uh, leading, uh, causing children to strike in school. I was, um, I was very rebellious. But when I get home, because I knew how to play like a Christian. Mm -hmm. I knew how I knew how the Christians talk, how they greet, how they behave. So at home I was very humble. Now to convince my mom that I I perform in in concerts mm -hmm. was difficult because at home I was very humble. Mm -hmm. I would wear very decent clothes, but inside <laughs> what I would be wearing was the the opposite <laughs> of what my parents knew about me mm -hmm. so if a person went to my mom and told my mom that we saw your daughter performing with a certain musician my mom would even slap them yeah, and tell them stop 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 spoiling my daughter's image my daughter can't do such a thing mm -hmm. because she had been blinded and then also i got to a point i disorganized their prayer life at home they would never pray as a family and it's very important for families to pray together because our battles are, are one when we are, when we are mm -hmm. praying through prayer. It's stronger when you do it together. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. So my, my parents stopped praying. Their, their prayer altar, everything was disorganized. Uh, whenever they would gather as a family to pray, I would uh, make them feel so tired. One time they slept in the living room when they were praying and they said now from today onwards since we are all busy we can pray for ourselves oh, no. and that was the end of prayer session and for you you know you've succeeded now yeah now the oh, challenge no. was when I, I was instructed to sacrifice my mom because she had become a problem to us whenever she would intercede and start praying for us somehow I would get my freedom. I would start feeling like my life is coming back. Mm -hmm. So now they gave me an assignment to kill her and my young brother oh to no. either to initiate him and uh, and kill my mother because my brother was obedient. He he, he also loved the things of God. Mm -hmm. My dad was busy looking for money, so him he was not a problem mm -hmm. to to our kingdom by then. Yeah, so that uh, process of me killing my mother is trying to kill my mother is what drew me closer to God because every attempt I made I would find myself again uh, under my mother's care like mm -hmm. I would f uh, e either I would faint because of the torture if I failed to kill her mm -hmm. and then the person who's taking care of me again in hospital is the same person I was trying to kill yeah so my my mother got so many complications i think she also shares her side of the story her mm -hmm. own side of the story and she was in and out of hospital being operated uh and and they are, they are just operating her based on guesswork you have fibroids you have this we have to take out the uterus we have but mm. the enemy's plan was to kill her wow. yeah but what saved my mother was her prayers mm -hmm. yeah so I, I would encourage parents to pay attention to what people say about your children. You may not, uh, you may not uh, accept in front of those people, but at least start observing your children mm -hmm. and also uh, keep in prayer. That's the only way to overcome the enemy and to train our children the ways of the Lord. We should never think that they are too young to understand spiritual things. If my grandmother by eight yeah. had turned me into a sorcerer, what if you train your child to
to pray and cast out devils by that time. She will even be safer. That's true. Yes. Instead of uh, when you go to churches, you find that children are outside playing while the parents are praying. Mm -hmm. And now when they get to 18 is when the parents want them to come to church it's and start late, praying. Yeah. And it's too late because you've already trained them that way, that when you go to church, you don't take si things seriously. You go to play. They have a lot of uh, space at home. They can play from home. You can take them out on any other day, but train them that when you go to church, Serious. Yeah, Serious. you're going to pray. You're not going to play. When you talk about your relationship with your mom, that it mm. was strained, mm. how was the relationship between your grandmother and your mother? Now, how they were you? enemies. Oh. My grandmother hated my mom and she could not hide it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because my mother was always disorganizing their things. She was prayerful. In fact, to us, we call her a pillar of our family because uh, everyone in our house has survived through her prayers. Yeah, so mm -hmm. despite what she went through, she never stopped praying. And that's what I want to encourage every mother. We have to, to be like intercessors mm -hmm. of our homes. You know, uh, men are so busy most of the time looking for money, mm -hmm. hustling. Yeah, but at least spare some time and pray for your husband, pray for your, for your children, mm -hmm. cover them in prayer. Even if they feel like what you're doing doesn't make sense when they see the results, later they will appreciate because it's not easy the enemy will always fight mm -hmm. a prayerful person but the results are always good mm -hmm. yeah because of my mother's prayers today i'm de i'm delivered and and i'm also helping other people <laughs> to get to out get yeah wow yeah. tell us what happened the very moment you got delivered the, the incidents of that day the very m uh, my deliverance took three years three years yes uh, getting initiated is easy, but coming out mm -hmm. is not easy. It's a matter of life and death, especially when you have information uh, about right. those people. Mm -hmm. they, they will fight either to kill you or to make you lose your mind. Mm -hmm. or They will do anything to destroy a person who has information about them. Yeah. Yeah, now, I got tired of everything because uh, the pressure... It, it, the pressure grew to a point that now they were demanding that I, I, I take my, my daddy's mind to, the, to them so that my dad, at a certain season of life, during the full moon, he's mad. And then during the half moon, my dad would be normal. So his madness was going to boost my finances. You know, like those rich people who have everything mm -hmm. but the wealth is coming from sacrificing a family member that is how i was supposed to live mm -hmm. so when i thought about it i was like but no come to think of it they want me to kill my mother they want me to initiate my brother and they want my dad's mind what does the enemy wish for yeah. me because i've been serving them for from when i was young to 18 yes and now when i question they are telling me that if I question what they are asking me to do, I will end up losing my life. So I was like, I don't have a life anymore. Mm. People are beginning to see the success, but the success is fake because what people see is you associating with the big people, getting contracts, getting connected and money, but they don't see that there are people who have sold their souls to get those things. And even, even if they can afford to, to get good houses, mm -hmm. big beds. They cannot even sleep in those beds. I was like, I can't even sleep. I'm serving the devil. I don't sleep. The Bible says he gives, the, he, he gives his beloved sweet sleep. I see Christians when I've been sent on missions to attack them, I find them sleeping. Me, I don't sleep. I don't know what it, uh, it feels like to sleep for a long wow. time. Mm -hmm. And then also eating. I had the money, but I could not eat normally. The things I was eating, actually, how I survived is just God because alcohol, you cannot survive just on alcohol. Maybe eggs because of the snake spirits that were in me, chicken. Mm -hmm. But apart from that, it's alcohol, maybe smoking, shisha, cigarettes, you know, you're in club, you, you want to buy, you want to buy a uh, company. You know, so you have to pay for your friends, yeah, uh, the drinks. yeah, the drinks, mm -hmm. so that they keep you company in club the whole night. For them, they think you're happening, 
but they don't know that you're there because you can't sleep. Mm. Yeah, so I was like, but now what kind of life am I, yeah. am I in? And how do I get out of this? The moment I started thinking about getting out of uh, witchcraft, mm -hmm. Now that's when the battles uh, increased in mm -hmm. my life. Mm -hmm. they, that's when they realized, okay, now this one is becoming rebellious. We have to kill. So the first thing I did was to give my phone to my mom. I wanted to confess, but I could not because of the covenants. Yeah, then she saw that I was struggling. I, was, I would be walking with her in town and then I start running. And she's wondering, why is she running? Cool. Yeah, I, I, jumping on a bike, I'm telling the biker, just take me home. You know, and she's wondering, why are you running? The Bible says that the wicked run when none pursues them. Pursue them. Yes. So I would, I would see people following me. I jump out of the car and my mom is running after me. So now she started now mobilizing intercessors. Mm -hmm. to, that's when she realized that, eh, my daughter is into something, but I don't know what exactly it mm -hmm. is, but we need prayers. So they started now praying, and the process of praying is when I, I started now opening up slowly and telling her, Mommy, don't take me back to grandmother. Oh. And now she started now realizing, okay, when I take her to grandmother, things I intensify. Are you telling her the reasons why you do not N want to go back? I could not uh freely express mm -hmm. myself because i was not fully delivered yeah, yeah but uh, i would now start pointing out mommy don't eat her food mommy don't do this oh. yeah would she do something to the food uh, yes she w she would uh, every food my grandmother would give us she would put her charms because that's the way she was initiating us that's why it's important to bless your food mm. because you don't know who, who prepared it and you know the in the business yes in the, especially in businesses where people use witchcraft it's good to bless your food because w there is power in prayer wow. yes mm -hmm. so uh it started like that for those three years the, she started now uh, mobilizing pastors to pray with me and uh, the day I got delivered, mm -hmm. I drank water because uh, when I was when I was bound, I was not drinking water. I was just drinking alcohol. Uh, I was drinking sodas. I was I was already thirsty, but I could never feel like I, you know, life in in me. I was already sickly. I was yeah, mm -hmm. so. The day I got delivered, I didn't know where I was. That's when my soul came into my body because the church prayed, people prayed intercessors, and uh, they prayed for me the whole night. Mm -hmm. And that night I was fighting. They were hearing voices in the house, uh, things uh, falling, you know, just like watches. Uh, I mean, the screen, things just falling. No one is pushing them. That's when they knew that I was into high-level sorcery. Yeah, so uh, eventually, when now my body came back into, my, I mean my and soul so came back into my body, I was behaving like a 11, an 11-year-old an 11 child. Oh my goodness. I was crying for my mom. I knew I was going to sit for my final exams, primary seven. I was crying for my school uniform. Um, anything from there to when to I was 18. 18. It just I vanished. I could not even remember or recognize my mom, my dad, because that time, the, the, the difference. Eh? Now my dad is old, my mom is old, my brother, who was about, who was in uh, primary four, is now a man with beards. And they are telling me, this That's is your, your brother. brother yeah. And my brother is scared of me because of the things he has been witnessing when, the, when I'm being prayed for. Mm -hmm. And even me, I'm scaring him because that's the only way I need to defend myself. Yeah, so I, I would tell him, if they have sent you to take me back, I just remember that I have powers mm -hmm. and I will deal with you. And he's running away from me. <laughs> so <laughs> it's like my, my life was in a mess. So now, uh, in, uh, during prayer, uh, they were led to pray for my, my soul to blend with my spirit and body. Mm -hmm. Now that's when uh, the first person I, re I recognized was my mom. So I was like, I think you're my mother. Mm. 
And she's like, yes, but I was scared of my dad and my brother. So m now be becoming, getting close to my mom, she used that as an opportunity to continue praying for me. Yeah, and then I, I, I sobered up, but I could not allow anybody to come near me. Except apart from mom. Yes. And this is the woman you have frustrated all yeah. your life well mm -hmm. since you were eight years old. Yeah, but now we are just getting now to know mm -hmm. each other. Mm -hmm. Now I'm asking her uh, about my life. Okay, what was I doing? Who are my friends? W you know, what am I going to do mm -hmm. now? Which, which class am mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. in? Yeah. You know? Yeah, so how do I dress like a Christian now that I'm born again? Okay, how do I protect myself yes. from going back to the things I've been in? Then I'm telling her what they have been telling me to do. And she, even her, she's shocked. She can't, she doesn't want to show me, mm -hmm. but because she has to support me. Yeah, so my mother is, 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 for me, I don't know how to describe her, but I am so grateful to God for her. Yeah. Mm. So now from there, um, she told me that the only way you can thank God is by exposing the enemy mm -hmm. and, and serving and serving God and helping other people to get out of what you've been in. And when I, I learned that, I said, okay, so now it's been years from the time I got delivered. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's like over 12 years it's I've been exposing. And uh, she said, the more they try to threaten you, the more you shout. And when you shout and expose them, they'll give up because mm -hmm. they know that you have nothing to do with them. And you're a child of God, you're walking in, in the light, so you can help other parents to, to pray for their children. Mm -hmm. yeah, and so be liberated. Yeah. Let me ask you, when you, got, when you were saved, mm. did they try to bring you back to the dark world? Were the battle battles? started again oh. from there. The devil doesn't give up. Mm -hmm. Till today, we have battles. Oh my goodness. Yeah, so you just have to determine. You say, this is it. I am born again. No matter what the enemy tries to bring my way, I'm focusing on, on what God wants me to do. Yeah, because the battles have always been there. Mm -hmm. Physical, spiritual, yeah. Can you mention some of the battles that have been thrown at you? Because I, I'll never forget the day mm -hmm. I went to minister. Mm -hmm. And these musicians went and knocked my mother. So me, I was preaching and I'm being told that your mother has been knocked. And I don't know whether I'm going to find her alive mm. or not. Because they do these things to scare you, to threaten you from, from talking or exposing them. And then uh, another attack I got is when they were trying to use social media to to discredit everything i say like oh. they can uh, they can pay certain uh, media houses to put like to to say that maybe so and so is not in her mind mm -hmm. her right mind or she's mad you know so things like that but now i got used to <laughs> those kinds Such of speech yeah. yes mm -hmm. yeah so it's been it's been battles after battles uh some have been physical they what come and you confront mean? you physically, others spiritual, but I have learned to pray and I have learned to uh, not to pay attention to what the enemy is doing, but to concentrate on what God is doing in my life. Mm -hmm. And that is how I've managed to survive up to today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. If, if because that time you were playing for the you know, enemy, mm. would you experience spiritual happiness? And are you able to still tap into that now? Uh, right now, mm -hmm. yeah, but it's not in my control. Uh -huh. With the help of the Holy Spirit, you know, I'm just living now like a normal Christian. Mm -hmm. And uh, the freedom, the peace, you know, it's, it's difficult when a person is being controlled by a demon. Because these the, the demons don't have bodies. But when they enter some, someone's body, mm -hmm. The, the mission is to destroy that life. They don't, they are, it's, it's like somebody entering a person's house and then they don't maintain it and mm -hmm. they, they don't pay for it, they don't service it. You're sickly, you're in pain. Yeah, that's what I was in. Mm -hmm. But the peace I have in serving God, you're not bound, you're free, 
you you have a will you can decide mm -hmm. what you do yeah so that's what i'm experiencing and for that reason nobody can convince me to to, to get out of serving yeah. god just waking up in the morning and, and sharing my experience with people and telling people that you know there is god and th the devil exists but he has no power god has more power than mm -hmm. the enemy is enough for me at least i feel like i have uh, if if I can help somebody get hope, a person who was in, who is in a position like the one the position I was in, if I can encourage that person and pray with that person, mm -hmm. that's what makes uh, life better for me every day. Okay. So I decided to to also write because I knew that when you just talk about these things, of course life has an an expiry that but whatever you have written even if you're alive or not people can can always read mm -hmm. yeah so you've written how I many have books written three so far we have written five five books yes I've seen three uh -huh. <laughs> yeah we have written five mm -hmm. yeah and i'll continue writing whatever i saw whatever i remember i'll be writing mm -hmm. so that maybe if someone is praying for their ch for their children and they have no idea of what they are dealing with they can always go and read and and know how to uh to pray for their families mm -hmm. yeah when you're talking about you know these secrets that you have actually packaged them in in, in mm -hmm. books yeah would you like to share some of you know the few snippets of these books and exactly how parents can probably protect themselves mm. um, and their children against these dark forces? One mm -hmm. is uh, when you just realize that you're pregnant, you dedicate your child to God. At that point. Uh, yeah, because now my auntie is working, she's working in the medical uh, sector and she's in reproductive health. So there are many doctors who are into witchcraft and uh, people just go out of excitement to give birth but some doctors just abandon mothers and they die just like that because mm. some of them are being used by the enemy there are doctors who will do things like intentionally that can hurt the mother and the child so it's very important when you find out that you're pregnant before you go to social media and mm. and do all those things it's very important for you to pray and dedicate your child to god because um, that child god has entrusted you with that child's life yeah. so you have to be faithful to god and then um also uh teach them for me i know that the best way to go is to teach them the ways of god because right now when you watch children's programs, mm -hmm. cartoons, they are teaching them about homosexuality. They are teaching them about uh, it's okay to, to have two mothers and, uh, you know, lesbians, the LGBT agenda. Mm -hmm. uh, they are teaching them Halloween. <coughs> they are teaching them magic. These are the things children are learning. So while parents are looking for money, they should also be careful what their children are watching. What are you paying for? What are you subscribing yeah. to? I, when my child is watching any cartoon, I have to make sure I know the content that the child is watching. Mm -hmm. And then also in schools these days, it's, it's becoming like you just have to pray and ask God to guide you about the schools where you're taking your children. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I've had parents uh, coming to me with a concern you know, uh, for example, there is one parent who found out that in that international school where she was taking her son is where they were teaching her son to be gay. Mm. Yeah, so she found out when she found the, the boy, a six-year-old, trying to sodomize her, uh, to sodomize his two-year-old brother. Yeah, and then when she str she tried to uh, discipline the boy, he said, but uh, they tell us at school that it's okay, you know. Mm -hmm. So... Even schools, the friends our children interact with, yeah, we have to watch out for those things. Sometimes uh, when, when you're homeschooling your child or when you're, when you're so strict, 
people may think may be uh, too much, mm -hmm. but it's better to be too much and protect the child's yes, future. Safe, yeah. Yes, than to just expose your children to everything. You know, there is a part in the neighborhood, go. There is this, you can just attend. Mm -hmm. you just make sure you know wherever you're sending these children. You just make sure you know that when you're sending them there, they'll come back the same way you, you have sent them. Right. Yeah, so even relatives, if a person is not saved, if a person is not of God, no matter how f uh, financially stable they are, mm -hmm. there are some values they can instill in your child that may be difficult for you to, to remove. So who are you entrusting your child to? You have to also watch out for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there are so many things apparent can look can at. Do. Mm. When you're saying life is spiritual, mm. what are some of the pointers that a parent can see in their children mm. um, and say these are red flags that the child is not growing the way they want them to? If a child is not free, mm -hmm. because mean? children mm -hmm. are, are free to express themselves, you know. Mm -hmm. A child is always a child. You just see they are playing, they are all over. But when you see your child starting to get reserved and, and uh, m also not feeling free to participate in uh, the normal children activities, then you start, uh, you start identifying that child and try to find out why. All of a sudden, this child was very active, this child was performing well, mm -hmm. then all of a sudden this child has withdrawn herself. Oh, they are now scared all the time, they are falling sick all the time. You know, you're going to hospital, the doctors are just now guessing. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so all those are pointers. Mm -hmm. Even their eating habits. Their children, uh, their children that some parents bring, like there's a child that they brought to us at church. That child was eating tissues, toilet paper. In fact, he, he even ate toilet paper in, in church in, uh, while all the parents were watching. Oh. He was eating clothes. They do strange things. They want to commit to do things that can put their lives in danger. Yeah, all those are pointers that something is not right with this child. Mm -hmm. So as a parent, you start praying. Yeah. There's a talk that has been ongoing recently mm. in the media and social media mm. about uh, the, what would you call Freemason? Yeah. How would you categorize that? Is it on the godly side or, you know, having known the secrets of both sides? Okay. Mm -hmm. I know there are some churches also that are being funded by those same uh, group of people because not everybody who poses as a as a pastor is really serving God. Mm. People go there for different uh, reasons, and then also uh, it's in it's in stages, it's in in levels. Like uh, in the brotherhood, there are those people who who are serve like they they serve in in stages. For example, you find like musicians. Mm -hmm. comedians, actresses, they are paid because they have influence. Mm -hmm. So when these people see that this person is shining, this, uh, this person has influence, they will approach the person and bring their agenda on table and this person will be like a blind witch mm -hmm. because he has been paid to promote that agenda. All right, yeah. so tell me about your books and where can people find these books? Okay, uh, my books are, I, I have four books. And my husband has written one book. Mm -hmm. All my books are Erica Part 1, Seven Years in Hell. Then there is Erica Part 2, 18 Years with Lucifer. Mm -hmm. uh, there I talk about my 18 years experience serving the enemy mm -hmm. and how I got out. Then uh, Erica Part 3, Witchcraft and Spiritual Warfare. Mm -hmm. And Erica Part 4. Uh, and then my husband has the truth about money because he was a secular artist and he he got saved yeah yeah so he also has his own side of the story which he will share in a short way yes mm -hmm. but uh my books are available on amazon mm. amazon kindle and also on our website www.lifespiritual.org uh i'm not so active on social media mm. because the of these people who hack accounts so it may be Erica Mukisa's testimonies mm -hmm. on, on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, yeah, and then my number for okay. those who want help, yes. they, they can contact me on 
plus two five four seven nine nine seven three three seven seven five. All right. Yes. Do you normally take calls of people struggling with spiritual world and help them overcome that? The best way to communicate with me may be through a WhatsApp like ah, message. That okay. one is easier. Because I, apart from ministry, I also have responsibilities. As a mom, yeah. can see you. Yeah, <laughs> another one on the way. Yeah, congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, to balance, at least if I find a message, I can yeah. find a way of replying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wow. responding to that person. Mm. Is it so easy to tell this story over and over again? Because Before, I, mean, it's a I, lot. Would, I would be sharing my experience and... Mm -hmm. and, and scream because of the pain I went through yeah. but now it's just a scar mm -hmm. I healed from that pain and uh, I just want to help as many people as, as possible, possible to heal also yeah, wow. yeah. recently yeah. I saw you visit the place where you initially were initiated through the Lake Victoria yeah how was that experience I, I just don't know how I did it but mm. I thank God I, I, I took that bold step. It was not easy. I almost, I almost uh, canceled everything, mm. but I said I have to do it because if I don't expose these things, then who will? Maybe mm. God allowed it to happen so that I show people what exactly is happening. And uh, to my surprise, we went with a tour guide. I had not even shared uh, or revealed who I was to him. But he was explaining the things I was... The same was things. The same things. He was talking about the rocks beneath. He was talking about the that water, that, sp that place being like a, a portal. It's like, yeah, y even when you see the water flow mm -hmm. there, it's, it's different from the other uh, places on that, on that Nile. It's on the White Nile. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so he was explaining everything the way I've been explaining but he's giving a different side of a story. And it's not like he knows it. Yes, wow. yeah. Wow. So I just thank mm -hmm. God we, we went there and we came out successfully. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Mm. So we thank you so much for even agreeing to host us in your lovely home mm. and sharing your story with us. Mm. It's very important because when people know the secrets of the dark world, mm. they know exactly how to go to battle yeah. and going to battle to win. Mm. So it's very important and we thank you so, so much for agreeing to come and give us your testimony. Amen. You're always welcome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we love yeah. this, um, you know, experience and, and the mm. fact that it did not end at the point where you stopped, you know, uh, serving the devil. Mm. You continued and now you're actually just recruiting people for God now. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. And we look forward to seeing the lovely little person that's... Soon. <laughs> it's coming soon. <laughs> yeah, wow. thank God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's also a testimony because people never, actually from where I'm coming from, mm -hmm. even getting married, I was not supposed to get married. That's what you were told. Yes, uh -huh. and uh, I was not supposed to have children. So me having children is, a, is, is yeah, a sign that God is powerful. That nothing is impossible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting.